Hello everyone and welcome to another episode here on the Learning Droid. Today we're doing a tea chest with scroll work and an hourglass as you just saw. The patterning process for the scroll work had to be repeated 10 times so rather than do the usual heat transfer pattern process I used a uh, form pattern process. Here we're using a printed pattern for the scroll work printed onto card. I'm then cutting out the lines, leaving connecting elements at corners and joints so that the whole thing doesn't fall apart into pieces. Uh, I cut out with a very fine scalpel blade craft knife, cut onto a cutting board of course. This is about 200 GSM card so it's reasonably thick and sturdy and allows for a nice and easy patterning process. It's quite complicated and quite difficult to cut out, it took quite a while but it saves time, saves money in the long run with the patterning process. If you're really good at freehand drawing, you can usually freehand draw patterns. I'm terrible at freehand drawing, so I used a pattern. But one of the issues with scroll work is if scroll work varies even a little bit from place to place, repetition of scroll work tends to look a bit odd. People tend to notice the mistakes or the um, issues where the scroll work doesn't match even if they're not sure exactly what they're seeing, the scroll work doesn't seem right. So even if you're freehand drawing, you want, might want to freehand draw a pattern and then cut it out and use a, a pattern card. Here transferring the pattern across, just using a light um, carbon pencil, place it on, draw it, take it off. Because the connecting elements have been left in to keep the card whole, I then have to do a little bit of tidying up and joining the lines up and making the scroll work whole afterwards, but this makes it nice and easy to get the scroll work placed right, get all the angles right, get the major elements of the scroll work in the right place, and then you can draw in the remainder of it using the connecting points. Nice and easy. From there, the actual burning of it was quite simple. It was made a little bit harder because the top is made of a uh, light plywood and the sides are made of a kind of very light pine. When you're burning on pine, there's a big variation in the density between uh, the soft wood and the hardwood, between the light and dark grain. Uh, so when you're burning you get a lot of burn splash and things if you're not very careful. This is the patterning for the hourglass. I used a slightly different patterning method which is called scratch patterning where I use a sharp blade to just scratch through the piece of paper to mark the wood and then I use a pencil to copy those lines. I also used a little bit of pencil through the paper where I'd cut it um, for some of the things where the scratch lines didn't go through properly. With the hourglass there's some shading to give it a 3D effect and it's supposed to be a three-legged hourglass at a slight angle so that you can see two legs on one side, one leg on the other. <coughs> Sorry about that. The 3D patterning, 3D shading is quite nice and I think it comes out quite well in the end product. Uh, the scratch patterning, quite difficult. You have to be careful not to scratch too deep and you have to be careful to make sure that you scratch uh, accurately because once the scratches are there the only way to really remove them is to sand deep enough to remove the scratches. If you scratch deep that means you're going to be sanding through quite deep and with things like plywood you're going to be sanding through the plywood and you're going to have to just replace the piece. Uh, hand drawing in the scratch pattern just to make it a little bit more easier to see when I'm burning because when I'm burning there'll be a different light source and it'll be a little bit harder to see. This is once the legs have been mostly finished off. You can see that most of it's in place, the legs, the hourglass, I'm just adding in a little bit of marking for shading and figuring out how I want to do the tops and bottoms. It all looks a little bit uneven now, but it's just a very roughly scratched pattern, very roughly drawn in pattern. When I burn, I'll be very careful to keep lines straight and keep everything even but I just want to get the pattern in and get it all settled and sorted and get the proportions right before I move on to lining everything up and getting everything neat and tidy. There we go. There's me adjusting some of the lines because I can see that it's not matching up with the scroll work. Now we move on to burning the scroll work. I'm using a wire tip machine and I'm using a spear point pyrography tip. Uh, that's a point you can see how to make on my wire point tips. It's a hammered and sharpened uh, V-point. Very similar to a fine detail point, but it gives you a little bit more control and it gives you a bit of a knife edge as well. 
I was using it a little bit like a calligraphy pit, calligraphy bit if you've got a solid point machine. So a calligraphy bit allows you to vary the thickness of a line by twisting your hand and I'm using the spear point very similar to the calligraphy bit here. You can see here I'm doing the bottom and the top at the same time. The left hand side is the bottom and the right hand side is the top and both have matching designs. Interestingly the original design actually had a lot more scroll work. There was scroll work going down both sides, scroll work wrapping around the sides and scroll work around the lock as well. But when I was patterning it onto there I actually found out that after these scroll works had been put in it was actually already starting to look a little bit crowded and I was sure that putting any more scroll work in would just make it seem a bit messy and a bit over the top. So I toned back the scroll work because the idea behind it was it was supposed to be something a little bit elegant, a little bit um, posh or, or highly designed. The idea is it's for a live action role play group, it's for a religious order within that live action role play group um, to use as a religious chest. So here you can see I'm starting the hourglass on the left hand side and I'm starting with the uh, upper edge. On the right hand side I've just finished off the main body and I'm moving on to dealing with the sand and the interior elements. On the main body on the top right hand side we've got a little bit of shading on the glass to give a little bit of a glint and we've got the shading on the legs to give them a the 3D effect. Um, I haven't finished the base which still needs to have the patterning done on it but I decided to move on to the sand first because the patterning on the bottom edge I needed it to look in place for the sand and I needed to see how the sand was going to look because I didn't want to over darken the bottom or under darken the bottom and then have to go over it again. Uh, going over burns over and over again is perfectly possible and it, it's a great way to get depth and, and um, darkness into a burn without actually burning the wood too heavily but it is difficult thing to control when you're not as skilled and I'm not as skilled I'm a very unskilled burner um, so as this was a gift for someone or a piece done for someone else uh, it was designed to be used by other people rather than be a test piece or a piece of art, just something that I was doing. Um, I didn't want to experiment with the uh, burning over the top of a burn again and again and again to get the depth. So I decided to do the sand first because of course the bottom is going to be touching the sand in the bottom part of the hourglass. So I needed to get the darkness and depth of that burn just right for the um, link between the two, otherwise they'd look a bit out of place. Here I'm using straight lines to give direction to the sand in the upper part because of course the sand is falling down. And on the left hand side you can see me doing the edges. I'm using spear point still but I'm using it tilted to give me the dark um, depth burn and then I'm using it flat to give the shading and I'm using it right on the edge to give me the fine line on the opposite side. Right on the edge to give the lines on the top of the sand for the falling dip as well. Once I'd gotten all the sand completed I moved on to doing the base of the hourglass which just like the top just using the edge again but the edge tilted about 45 degrees to give myself the thick dark burn and I decided to do it quite dark and quite deep to give the effect. Doing this I was wearing a full APEK filter mask because I'm burning plywood. Whenever you're burning plywood remember that you're going to be burning through onto glue. There's nothing you can really do about that it's unless you've got a very thick surface plywood or you're doing a very very light burn. Always wear a mask when burning things like plywood or anything like that. In fact to be fair always wear a mask. If you're going to be burning anything at all if you're going to be burning anything that contains glue or tanning agents or anything like that, make sure you wear a full filter mask with a proper filter on it. This is the edges. As you can see, there's the dark and light grain, and the dark and light grain makes it very hard to control the depth and the broadness of the burn. I didn't do perfect here, but I did okay. I'm still practicing. I mean, I could have done with turning the temperature down and doing a few repetitions. And this is the finished piece. As you can see, came off quite nice. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.